we don't see ourselves the way God sees us. And sometimes it takes God speaking to make us see how he really sees us. You could get so lost in Scranton and used to Scranton that you not see how God sees Scranton. See, that's the beauty of the Lord. The first time he met Simon, he said, they call you Simon, but I will call you Peter. And it wasn't till three years later that the Lord caused that prophetic word that he gave him the first time he saw it to manifest and his new identity to come forward. You see, we don't see us or we get used to what we are rather than who we should be. And so with that, here's a couple of things the Lord has said to me, Aaron, if you'll help me. Uh, This is how I think he sees Scranton. He sees it as a place of revival. Now, revival means life is coming back where life had departed. The first example of revival is Jacob uh, in the Word of God after he has lost Joseph and the brothers have deceived him and sold him and he's been down ruling Egypt and the brothers, God orchestrates the brother brothers back into Joseph's path. See, the Lord is orchestrating paths all the time. And all of a sudden, Joseph develops a way to go back and tell his father. And the brothers go back and say, your son Joseph, the double portion anointing. And that was why they didn't like it. They knew if they got one portion, Joseph got two portions. And they didn't like him that he could tap in to God with dreams. And that his dad favored it. And he he sends them back and think about now 17 years later. When they're walking up to Jacob and they're looking at Jacob and they say, your son Joseph is alive and he's ruling all of Egypt. The Bible says his heart stood still because of the unbelief. In other words, the very ones who had lied to him and told him that an animal had killed him, brought back the mantle for the future, gave it back to him. That coat of many colors said, that's gone now for you. All of a sudden, they're telling him He's alive, and not only is he alive, he's over all of Egypt now. And then God says something to him, and this is where I want you to start seeing Scranton for revival. Said, they heard the words that, he heard the words that only Joseph could have spoken, those prophetic words that the brothers brought back to it. See, when you start rehearsing the prophecies that have been spoken, and you start remembering what God has said and tried to do, whether it didn't get done or not, 
And then they said, and when he saw the wagons filled with supply, his heart revived. And you know what that says to us? For revival to come, we have to rehearse what God has said about a city or an area. We have to remember that God had a purpose no matter what tried to kill the purpose. And then we have to also know that there's a breakthrough of supply of provision for our journey ahead. And God said, America, until Scranton starts gathering, America will not see revival. Go figure. I mean, only God can say things like that. We have books of prophecies over states and cities. And yet, he spoke something different for this nation. And said, until I see that kingdom, people that I had planned, gather into Scranton to worship. This nation will not see revival. Now look at somebody and say, it means something, you being here tonight. And who knows? Why, what all he knows that we don't know. And I'm a history buff. And trust me, I've studied and tried to find something. (laughs) Why God would single out Scranton. And yet, he showed me something. He said, Scranton will be known as the crossroad for the revolution ahead. Now let me, here's the way I'm going to do this tonight. I'm going to share something and then I'm going to prophesy. And the Lord would say to you, you have spent the last 13 months breaking a spirit of religious rebellion. The Lord says you have broken a rift in this atmosphere that would have ruined a nation in days ahead. You have faced off the religious rift of this land, saith the Lord. And because you have faced off that religious rift, I will now turn the rebellion that has come from this territory into a revolution. Let me stop for a moment because there's a fine line between rebellion and revolution. Because revolution is something that is a surprise happening, something that happens in a way that it mobilizes such a change that it actually looks like rebellion, but it creates benefit. And the Lord says, let me say it a different way. 
coming out of Scranton will be a benefit for this nation.